All right, today we are joined by another Hostati Music Network artist who are two guys that make up uh, Weird Science. They go by the name of David and Austin. Uh, they have opened up for guys like Buku, Megalodon, Kaiwachi, and have played festivals like the Virtual Burning Man and the Connection Festival in Boise. Um, how are you guys doing today? Pretty good. Good. Um, so let's let's jump into like some uh, some backstory on you guys. Um, we'll start we'll start with Austin real quick. Give give your angle of like the backstory of Weird Science and how that came to be. Um, so I've been moving around a lot in my life. I've lived in places like Colorado, New York, North Carolina. I somehow ended up in Idaho, um, and there's a local venue called the Gym. And uh, new to Idaho, I wanted to see how the scene is, meet everybody, kind of introduce myself. And so I think it was bass physics was playing at the gym with like Ed Amame and um, a bunch of Elliot Lip, maybe, mm -hmm. I don't know. And then on the lineup at the bottom, it said Phoenix. And so I thought it was just a whole tour package. And so I was like, tight, let's go. I go out and I show up early just so I can say hi to everyone. And Phoenix is up on stage and he's just slaying it. Like one of the, it was like melodic kind of future bass type oh, music sick. and I was loving it. Yeah. And so he comes off the stage and I run up to him and I introduce myself. I'm like, hey, my name's Austin. That was killer set, dude. I uh, haven't really heard sounds like that. Mm -hmm. And we just get to talking and I'm like, yeah, dude. So how are you liking the tour? Where are you from? And he's like, no, I'm just the local guy. I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, we yeah. get to talking and it had been like, maybe we saw each other two times and it was like I played a show and then he played a show and it was kind of like the same vibe the same type of style of music that we were playing mostly just all over the place whatever we wanted to play we were playing it right and so I can't remember who came up with the idea but we were like hey dude you just want to play music together oh wait no, no it was Brian sure. Cena uh the owner of the gym he had booked an act I think it was pleasure and he got sick and couldn't make it and so he wanted to surprise someone with someone else and he couldn't find anyone. So we went oh. up to him and we're like, hey, we can play like a back-to-back -back set. And he's like, okay, yeah. do you want me to put that other doctor <laughs> in Phoenix? I'm like, no, let's, we'll come up with a name. And David was like, how about Weird Science? And I'm like, sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Um, so from there, then how did you guys obviously just start working together? And um, that was what, two years ago, you said? yeah two years ago okay so and then we were talking kind of before the interview and you you were saying that um once you guys did get together it was only about a year and then COVID hit so covering that much ground um with playing you know virtual burning man and uh festival already in your first year congratulations on that that's yeah, thank you almost unheard of <laughs> um so uh let, let's go into uh how you guys know Hastati, um, Todd, and Andrew, and those guys? Um, I met Todd, I think it was 2011. Um, I had moved up to Rexburg, Idaho. I was going to school out there, or my girlfriend at the time was going to school out there, and I wanted to move and be closer to her. So I found this run-down basement apartment. It was like <laughs> bucks a month, <laughs> and I got a room. I got a bed and I shared a room and my roommate happened to be Todd. Uh, and that was back when I was young. I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life, yeah. but that's when like Skrillex was coming out and Rusko was making music mm -hmm. and it was getting really popular. And we all were the old all school guys. Music. And so boom, making it. <laughs> nice. Nice. Well, I want to hear from you a little bit. Uh, give me the, the backstory of, of your angle of how that happened. Um, how you became an artist and then how, obviously, you told me the story of how you guys met. But Yeah, I remember uh, going to shows in Salt Lake City uh, that were being thrown by uh, V2. And I think my first one was like, it was like a pajama jam or something like that. And the main artist was like Laid Back Luke. And oh, dude, that... I love Laid Back Luke. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah, he's, a, he's amazing. Yeah, he's a yeah. pioneer, definitely. Um, and he's kind of what got me into it originally. Okay. Like just his style of mixing, it was just flowy and just like playful and just completely unorthodox. Right. In my opinion. Yeah. And I, yeah, I, I kind of just flow from stuff like people like that, that don't really set like anything in place with yep. their DJ sets. They just kind of let it go with the flow. Let it flow thing. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you and guys, that, that's kind of, 
Well, sorry. Do you guys have like a specific like? Because obviously, you guys are like mainly bass music. Um, yeah. Do you guys have like individually? Do you guys have a favorite of like what you guys like to produce and play personally? Mm, I'd say for myself, I like to play a lot of flowy stuff. Okay. Just like basically anything that's like fluid. Gotcha. What about yeah, you? Anywhere, anywhere from like house music to break beats to okay. any any bass music, really. Yep. Yeah, I've been I've been really getting into like bass house a lot, um, like Jaws and Night Bass and all those guys. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Um, what about you? What about you? What's the uh, genre subgenre that you would say that um, you primarily focus on? I like making anything that kind of has a, a, a movement throughout the whole song. Okay. So whether it be like something that has a steady groove to it or like David, something that flows together, something mm -hmm. that – and it's something that evolves over the whole song. So to me, it doesn't matter about the BPM or the genre or anything like that. It's about how it moves throughout the whole song. Right. Yeah, I mean, that's – I've seen some like – crazy mixing where it's like they go from you know especially good I, i'll give a prime example of this hero bust I've, I've seen that guy play house just like randomly in like one of our local shows and uh obviously he played like mostly what his sound normally is but then he like somehow switched it up and played house i'm like how do you switch genres in the middle of a set <laughs> pretty impressive so that's something uh, we love to do yeah like, David yeah. will just mid say he's like hey you want to play some drum and bass i'm like sure get it sure do it. <laughs> that's awesome and being able to go up there and just have fun and you know not have like a set game plan i feel like um but it also helps you guys I, i'm sure you guys are really good at reading crowds too at this point yeah. since that's kind of what you guys strive to do we're really good at reading each other as well yeah just there's literally zero communication up there we just kind of know what we're doing which is like, super important in a duo extremely yeah. important in a duo or any time you're going back to back really um all right, what, what do you guys see coming up for the future of the Weird Science project? I could see us um, just starting to reach out more into different states. That way we can get a little bit more of a following and stuff, because mm -hmm. I feel like that's where you get most of the following is meeting new people in new states and stuff like that. Right. No. Well, welcome to California. <laughs> um, cool. All right. Well, uh, from... From making music and DJing, did you guys start making music first or did you guys start DJing first? Because I know some people, depending on the artist, have start, there's different starting points for different people. So That's what's cool about it. us yeah. is that David started DJing first and I started making music first. Nice. And, it was net. <laughs> nice. and then you guys helped each other on the lacking yeah. parts of your, yeah, your strength exactly. and weaknesses went together very well. That's awesome. He's the one that taught me how to DJ. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I uh, that that's the only thing I know how to do, which I'm not the best at, but I do know how to mix somewhat. <laughs> um, that's why, you know, business wise, I love the business and end of the music industry, but the music portion and like that's just not where I'm creative at all. <laughs> so I give you, I give artists a lot of props for being able to, especially like guys like you, where you guys are like multi genre. Like, do you guys do you guys produce also other genres, or do you guys primarily stick in the bass music? category mm, we, i think we've stuck in the bass music for the most part okay yeah. we, we've uh, tried our hand at some drum and bass but we still have those we play those songs out live yeah i feel yeah. like drum and bass is still technically under bass music yeah know, my, my last episode i had uh i don't know if you guys know uh exile collective mm, i haven't heard of them they're out of the bay area um not not a huge collective but um are they from your area yeah well okay. kind of they're from like san francisco area okay so um because i'm more kind of closer where todd lives in like sacramento area uh, so i played um the last episode i i'm gonna play in your episode as well and everyone has already heard um i i picked three of my top favorite songs on my daily playlist uh one of those songs are drum and bass songs so i was trying i try and match up like whoever the artist like whatever their style is with the beginning sometimes i mess around and i don't do that but last episode i tried to um so I, I included a drum and bass song and they were they're a dubstep collective so i feel like drum and bass and dubstep a lot a lot of drum and bass it's artists. the best genre honestly. yeah 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 <laughs> I, honestly yeah i i'm starting to 
I'm getting to that point with dubstep where I'm like kind of getting burnt out from it. And I'm like, I like trans now. I like house now. I like, <laughs> but you know, bass house now. I like all these different genres and it's trying to expand my, my ear. Um, I've been trying to have other people on rather than just, you know, bass music producers. So, cause I, I want to, yeah. Um, so you went, you went to school for, uh, did both of you guys go to school for music producing or did, was it just one of you guys? No, it was just Austin. Okay. <clears throat> So then how, did, how did you get into it then? How do I get into music production? DJing. DJing? First, yeah. Yeah, like I said, it was uh, originally watching like Laidback Luke and stuff. And That's then right. I eventually got my own stuff. That's I got my own gear. Because I used to DJ with uh, my next door neighbor. And we were just kind of throwing parties at his house all the time. That's and it just wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was good. But I just felt bad for his like mom's because she was. <laughs> <laughs> the one putting up putting up with all of us i'm like i'm gonna get my own gear do my own thing yeah but that's, that's awesome. how, yeah that's how it started cool um all right guys well uh i think we're wrapping up here um and then your mix is an hour correct yeah cool all right so then yeah we'll get an, get an hour right right after this for everyone who is listening um thank you guys for being on the show today uh yeah. i will uh keep you guys and I'll keep in touch with you guys as we get closer. And um, yeah, thank you again for being on. And thank you for being part of Hostati. Hopefully we get to see you. Um, hopefully soon. I know Todd's yeah. working on some live live events and stuff. Hopefully, hopefully we'll be able to have you guys out and actually get to meet you in person. Hopefully soon. All right, guys. Talk to you later. Yeah, right, thanks, thank you, man. man. Yep, bye.